Let's just look at the concept first. Countif asks for a range and then a criteria, a range, then a criteria. So the first thing Excel is asking for is what range do you want me to look at? So I've just uh, navigated across to cell H5 and then I can go control shift and down on the Windows PC. Now at this point, it's a good idea to hit the F4 key, hit the F4 key on the Windows PC. That's gonna put those dollar signs in. It's important to put the dollar signs in uh, with Countif because we're often gonna copy this formula down. So we've given Excel the range, then we want to pick out um, the criteria. So the piece of data that we want to count in that range. And that's how simple Countif is. Now in this case, because I've, actually entered what I'm looking for into the formula there. And I'm looking for text. I have to put that text in speech marks. You can see I've put the speech marks in there. That gives us 437. Now I'm going to go control D still gives us 437. But if we change this to L, uh, this now gives us 444. So 437 wins and 437 uh, losses. Uh, what's that in total? So alt plus here gives us a total of 881. So this is a validation check, a validation check. If the formula is accurate, then <coughs> we should have 881 pieces of data, which we've got. It's a little more complex, isn't it? A little more complex because um, we want to count just the data so far, just the data so, so, so far. So for this row, we just want to count this cell. For row six, we want to count these two cells row seven, row eight, row nine. Ideally, we only want to put the formula in once. You know, you could do this manually 881 times by, for example, selecting the range like this and putting the criteria in. You know, you could do it like that. If we do this, so here we've got no reference. We've got no dollar signs, no dollar signs in our reference. So what happens here? Well, as we go down, we can see, you can see those references. Hmm, moving down as well. That's what we call a relative reference. Another idea would be a full absolute reference. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four dollar signs in. I was just hitting the F4 key there. And now what's going to happen? Well, we're going to get the same result every time because each cell is going to refer to the same range. So let's give it a go. So count if range. So what we want to do is whatever cell we're in, we want to start at H5. So H5 is going to be fixed. I'm going to hit the F4 key here. So this is what we want. We've got a combination of an absolute and a relative reference. And then the criteria for this one is going to be a W here. Okay. Now what happens? Okay, that's accurate. So, so far, so good. Okay, so it should be counting the number of Ws. So it seems to be accurate. Four Ws so far, then five and six Ws. So I can just go down these formulae, just hit the F2 key here. I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, hitting the F2 key, down arrow, F2 key. I want to copy this formula across, yeah? So I could do this, copy this, control C, escape, copy in here to L, L for losses. I could do that. So what change would we have to make this for, to this formula to make it work in this cell and in this cell? What we want to do with this cell is we want to fix the column, but not the row. We want that row to come down with the formula, but we want the column to stay in the same place when we copy it across a spreadsheet. Let's just go through the options. Yeah, no dollar signs, two dollar signs, dollar sign between the letter and the number, and then a dollar sign to the left of the letter. That's what we want. That's going to fix the column, but not fix the row. So we've got three dollar signs in there, full absolute reference. And what do we call this? We call this a partial absolute reference. Love it. All right, let's go. So this seems to be returning the same results. That's great. So I'm copy this across now. Shift the right arrow, Control R, auto fill right, and then I can just uh, double click here. So rather than having the W there, because it's not the same formula, is it? If I change the W to an L, let's have a W and L. Now we can change this to a reference here. Bang. This is a nice demonstration. So this should also be a partial absolute reference. We want now to fix the row but not the column. Hmm. Fix the row, but not the column, because we want to pull that across as well. How to do that? Well, we want a dollar sign, just hitting the F4 key, a dollar sign between the letter and the number. That's a great demonstration of partial and absolute references. So now if I go Control R here, I've got a zero because that reference has moved across and 
we can see what's happening here. Shall we check this? Let's say uh, wins plus losses. So we're doing putting in an extra formula as a bit of a validation check here. Let's add these set two cells together and then these two cells, they should add up to, what should they add up to? The number of matches so far. This is the idea. So a little validation check, auto fill down. Yeah, and the number of matches is just gonna go up by one each time. What was the total number of matches we had? Control and down arrow, 881. It's Chris here, and if you enjoyed this video, I've got a special treat for you. We've got a full one-hour session from our Members Monday community. It's absolutely free. All you have to do is sign up, put your email into the link below this video. We will email you some information about our fantastic Members Monday community, but it's absolutely free. It's a one-hour session. The link is in the video description below.